皆さんどうも、ライアンサトリアでございます。Hey, you believe in Kafar Bastards? It's me, generic YouTube commentator number 769. Except, I won't be going on a cringe binge reaction rampage for today because for today, I'm gonna be taking a piss out of Indonesia's naughty censorship board to review one of the country's best psychological dramas, Killers! Brought to you by one of the only few Indonesian filmmakers having the balls enough to deliver an uncompromising, unrestricted, and work of art. You see how extreme that is? I don't know why I keep doing that, but nonetheless, uh, what was? Oh yeah, the filmmakers like the kind-hearted Bapa Bapa, looking motherfucker, Kimo Stamboyo, Kimochi. And his second twisted partner in crime, the breathtakingly fucked up Timochi Jayanto. I mean, Timo Jayanto. Masaga, kare ni taisuru kimochi wa kawaranai desu. The fuck? They are the Mer Brothers. Now back onto the movie. I watched Killers two years ago at that. I anji. Yeah, ini dong boss. Ini baru ada greget ni. I watched Killers two years ago at the cinema when it first came out. I don't know why I'm only reviewing it now, but anyway, throughout the review, we'll be directing our focus a little more on Timo, the primary brainchild of this movie, because he's the desensitized fucker who came up with it anyway. So, sorry, Timo. <laughs> now, a little backstory on the Mo Brothers. No, no. The Mo Brothers are well known for their first feature-length slasher gore fest, Romadara, or Macabre, which I enjoyed simply because of the perfect blend between Asian and Western horror. Timo is also responsible for making a couple of short horror segments, El is for Libido, from the ABCs of Death, which is absolutely wankworthy. <laughs> Puns. And Safe Haven from VHS to a collaboration with one of my all-time favorite directors, Gareth U. Evans. He previously planned on directing a neo-noir action thriller which was somehow cancelled and its screenplay instead translated into a graphic novel. Fucking hell. He's also only recently finished principal photography for his newest action film. Headshot. God damn. Look at those posters. He's now filling an ADR for the movie, any incoming trailer around post in the meantime, which, by the way, where is that trailer? Alright, this personal naughty uncle he calls himself, promises a short teaser trailer SIX FUCKING MONTHS AGO After being bombarded with a fuck ton of tweets from fans alike, all of them asking when that trailer might drop, his responses are golden as always. Timo bros, masih sabar nungguin trailer headshot. Bentar lagi, babe. Ditahan dulu, biar keluar barang, ya. Bang Timo, trailer film headshotnya mana bang? Sudah lama kami semua menunggu. Sabar bang, bang bros. A little more sexual there. I even once had a short conversation with him and his composer back in 2014, which was bar none one of the best days of my abysmal life. It was either that or the second coming of Christ. Talented twerkers. <laughs> that alliteration though. But uh, I digress. So, enough of the foreplay. Let's begin. The story revolves around two seemingly unrelated men sharing nothing in common. One of them is a wealthy but lonely Japanese former businessman named Nomura, who turns out to be a serial killer, having an unhealthy obsession with making snuff films which he occasionally uploads on dodgy websites, possibly from the deep web to satisfy his violent urges. The other guy, Bayu, an Indonesian journalist slash reporter investigating a political scandal from the raid baddie, suddenly stumbles on one of Nomura's artworks. Unlike Nomura, Bayu is poor but has a family and a daughter who loves him unconditionally, despite being progressively estranged due to the divorce. But both of them are nonetheless going through tough times. 
The film really kicks off when Bayu finds himself becoming a victim of a robbery by two Indonesian premans, but in the process survives the struggle and kills the two men in self-defense, and is then somehow inspired to film the aftermath before posting it online. Nomura sees this and reaches out to Bayu to guide him in the right direction. He wants Bayu to realize his full potential as a serial killer. The deeper it goes, though, the more he starts to feel uncomfortable and realize that maybe, just maybe, this isn't the life for him. Some of his past mistakes catch up with him and from there, things get very out of control. <sighs> oh god, that was a mouthful. First of all, the overall story and narrative structure. I rated an 8 out of 8 mate. Because I, at first, had inklings of it being just plain and generic like how most murder movies play out but I've never been so wrong. The story is unique, original for the most part, and unpredictable. Instead we focus more on the psychology of the killers which is heaps better than two clowns competing against each other on which of them can get the best, most spectacular kill which was actually their first original draft, not even joking. The story itself demonstrates how people are capable of violence regardless of location and circumstance. I'd just like to mention, despite the movie being disturbingly brutal for most viewers because of the subject matter it deals with, the violence isn't just executed for the sake of violence, but the nature in which it was inflicted. So the entire movie essentially revolves around the theme of violence, how it's described to be a cycle, passed on from one individual to the next, kids generally victimized on account of their still gradually growing malleable minds. Timo explores this idea really well. Sometimes people may feel that violence and gore in movies can arguably influence violence in reality but I don't necessarily agree with that point 100%. I don't really believe in that because it all comes down to whether or not that person is inherently violent. I mean, I love watching violent as fuck movies. I practically grew up with them. I remember the moment I watched Freddy vs Jason with my parents. Parents of the year. Allahu Akbar. I turned out alright, for the most part. Quentin Tarantino didn't go on a killing spree, let alone Eli Roth and Takeshi Miike. I'm not sure about Timo though. Speaking of him, Timo wrote the entirety of the script alongside Takuji Ushiyama who was a big help on the Japanese parts, but ultimately this was Timo's idea. The screenplay perfectly encapsulates the subconscious and creeping effect violence has on human development. The writers have added so much depth to these so-called killers, which adds other angles to how we viewers perceive their behavior, especially the changes in our impressions as the movie plays out. Now the actors who play the two main killers, Oka Antara and Kazuki Kitamura, they are bloody brilliant, especially Oka. This is without a doubt his best performance as an actor yet. The third half of this film really showcases his acting chops, like that. He portrays very well the consequences of being in certain shitty circumstances, exacerbated by violence that could truly take a toll on a person mentally and his or her surroundings physically. There's a grisly animalistic nature peppered throughout both their journeys to exemplify how inside us all lives a killer. The movie is attempting to point out that everyone on this planet are either killers or have the willingness and capacity to be one. It is in a way in our nature to kill. Human beings are frankly the most violent creatures inhabiting this planet. We are the perpetrators of violence and death. Not a lot of movies are this audacious in their motive, this ballsy and bold enough to explore something that's had a vital impact on many of the problems we oftentimes see in the world. Without going into too much detail into politics, i just like to sum up that the synergy between the film's incredible screenplay and actors surprised me in how much I managed to somehow sympathize with both of these men, despite the fact that they have done a lot of disturbing maniacal fucked up shit to quench their thirsts, if you will. But the thing is, their thirst, their desire to kill are driven by different factors. Nomura's being a fetish or form of entertainment that originates from past trauma, whilst Bayou's being a necessary factor in the pursuit of justice very compelling stuff. Thus, I'd like to state that the main highlight of this movie is how different these two individuals are. The choice of actors is perfect. Whilst Oka has an inherently gentle and roundish face that would make anyone easily sympathize him, Kazuki has that gravelly, sharp, intimidating, and calculating look. Gila. The cinematography is beautifully exquisite. 
Almost every shot feels perfectly framed. The color grading difference between Nomura and Bayou sequences complement on the stark contrast between their personalities and situations. Nomura's scenes adopt a more bleak and grayish aesthetic whilst Bayou's is more towards the warm, orangey colors. The choice of colors is varied yet flawlessly harmonious. The aesthetic is furthermore elevated by good use of slow-mo and classical music juxtaposition. So don't forget the sound mix as well, a very underrated aspect of a film. The grungy, menacing beats permeating throughout the movie, accompanied by a gruesome, well-timed mixture of classical instruments, just made the film feel more cerebral, and intoxicating, and dreamy, and euphoric. It was just the content and subject matter of the film that most normal people might find disturbing, but personally, I didn't think this movie was too gory or sadistic. It's pretty mild if you already watched the Moe Brothers work before. Unlike their previous films, the Moe Brothers sought out to tell a realistic and grounded story about violence, yet there are some scenes where the movie just came off as a bit, yeah right. Particularly the hotel chase scene where Bayou just blazes through a mob of bodyguards without getting kroyokt, without getting trampled or beaten midway. Seriously, this guy just runs through a wall of people trying to stop him and... The fuck man. <laughs> now about the movie's timing. The movie clocks in just a little over 2 hours, as a result Killers unfortunately suffers little pacing issues at times, particularly in the beginning in order to properly establish the main characters, their differing situations they face in life, their relationship with other characters, the various subplots etc etc. Consequently, the movie is a little bit longer than I expected. If only they'd cut down just 10 to 15 minutes of its overall running time, Killers would have been near perfect. Although. If I was their editor, I wouldn't know what the fuck to cut out because every scene just felt so goddamn good. Do I recommend it to people though? Well, it's quite difficult to recommend this to people without sounding like a complete psychopath for loving the movie. Unless you're okay with seeing someone shove a pair of pliers into some asshole's neck, some implied pedophilia and domestic abuse as well as a chick deep throating a baseball bat to death courtesy of Nomura's sportsmanship conduct, then you shouldn't watch it. Overall, albeit some pacing issues, Killers has a beautifully sinister storyline, a unique script that was brought to life the best way possible by two perfectly casted main actors who went maximum effort on their acting abilities. Not to mention great sound editing, complemented by a well-timed euphoric soundtrack that just, all in all, molded the movie towards a riveting but sweet and somber fucking finale. Thank you, Mo Brothers. God, that was a long ass video. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, see you later. See you next time. Have a great day. Uh, God, I need to take a shit right now.